Hey all, today I'd like to go over DC's vast and complex cosmology as it exists today. I'll also try to go over some of the creatures that are native to these realms in the cosmology as well, because I think it would be interesting. A lot of power scalers out there seem to have a very poor understanding of just how vast DC is, which is understandable as it is extremely complex and, and hard to research. So I'd like to try and clear up as many of the misconceptions as possible. Of course I'm going to miss some things, particularly things only mentioned in a single comic issue, but I'll cover as much as I can. I'll also be debunking some common myths associated with DC's cosmology throughout the video. We have Grant Morrison's multiverse map to help us with some of this, but it is noticeably silent on a number of cosmological structures. There are so many ways to interpret many of these pieces of evidence, and so I'm pretty sure plenty of people will disagree with me on something. So instead, try to take this as me simply giving you the information needed to interpret DC yourself, and not the simple be-all and end-all. Now, I know I say this nearly every video these days, but you are really going to want to buckle in for this one because it's going to get extremely out of hand extremely quickly. Now I'm going to start at the bottom, with the universe itself. Even just using finite statements for the universe, we have a statement of it expanding out to 60 trillion light years wide at its birth. Bear in mind that the observable universe today in real life, at around 14 billion years old, is only 93 billion light years wide, depending on which measurement you use. So right at the beginning of time, the DC universe was already much larger than our own and later Superman was taken 100 trillion light years away from Earth. The Earth is weirdly situated at the center of the DC universe, so this would make its structure around 200 trillion light years wide. However, it is most consistently described as being infinite or endless in size. In one case, it was even implied that each universe has an infinite number of heroes, let alone all the other stuff like stars and planets and things. There also exists an antimatter universe, but you could argue that this one antimatter universe is giant and is actually parallel to all the universes, as that is how it's often described. This is where the heroes, aliens, and animals you all know well live. I suppose here I'll also talk about the microverse, since I'm not really sure where else it would go. It is essentially its own universe that exists below the subatomic, an infinitesimal world which can only be reached after passing through several quantum barriers. It is the foundation of all creation, and if it were ever disrupted or destroyed, everything else in creation would go with it. The microverse even has its own quantum realm of particles that make up the planets and things that can be found there. So now let's talk about the number of universes in DC total. I've seen a lot of people try and argue that DC in its current state only has 52 universes. This is not true at all. The 52 universes are only the local multiverse to our heroes. Universes beyond the 52 have been addressed repeatedly, and in one story, the myth of there only being 52 worlds was directly debunked with Rip Hunter directly telling us that in truth there are infinite universes. Which is far more consistent with statements from practically every era of DC Comics, where we are directly told numerous times that there are infinite universes. So please, please, please stop trying to assert that there are only 52 universes, or Rip Hunter will be very disappointed in you. This multiverse of infinite universes is then part of another structure called the Metaverse. Every single event, every quantum moment within the infinite multiverse itself creates an infinite number of new realities where every variation of that event takes place. This is essentially taken from the many worlds theory, where every new possibility creates its own reality, where that thing goes from a possibility to reality, except on crack in this case. Giving us many, many infinities of universes. Think of it this way. Every fraction of a second, each of the infinite universes produces infinite additional universes, which then go on to join in on the mess, each creating their own infinite set of universes for every quantum moment on and on until the end of time. Pretty mind-blowing to even try and comprehend, 
but it gets much more complicated than this tip of the iceberg further into the cosmology. This metaverse itself is contained within a structure known as the Bleed. The Bleed is a higher dimensional realm, and is probably one of the most mysterious parts of the whole cosmology. I should clarify that when I use the term dimension here, I am referring explicitly to mathematical dimensions. The things that make a cube three-dimensional, a square two-dimensional, or a tesseract four-dimensional. Geometric dimensions. I am not referring to time, or something like a plane of existence, which the word dimension is sometimes used to describe. Now within the bleed is a structure called the Orrery of Worlds, which exists to monitor the 52 universes within the local multiverse. Within the Orrery is a room described as being pan-dimensional, or containing all dimensions. A similar room was also shown to have been accessed from Earth by the Phantom Stranger and Trigon Sons, but this one could exist anywhere really, but it more than likely also resides within the Bleed, as you'll see. So if the Bleed contains all dimensions, exactly how many is that? Well, in the same comic, the Orrery of Worlds was said to be rotating throughout the fifth dimension. And no, this is not the same as the realm that Mixie is from, which isn't fifth dimensional at all. That's a myth I will address later in the video, along with the Perpetua downplay. Along with this are numerous other dimensional statements, ranging from 6, 8, 9, 11, 12 and a third, 14, 19, 24, 28, 52, and in one peculiar case of 196,833 dimensional snowflake, which I believe, interestingly enough, it applies to the Wildstorm reality within DC, if you've ever read those comics. Now that's a lot to comprehend, but you don't have to worry about all of that because infinite is the word of the day, and there have been many statements of infinite innumerable dimensions throughout DC. So the bleed alone contains infinite dimensions. Which leads me onto something that I wish I didn't have to go over, but I do. A number of attempts have been made to debunk the infinite dimensional statements via things that authors have said on Twitter. Many of these are out of context, as you can see with the deleted tweets, or are the result of leading or loaded questions. But regardless, I do not take something like a Twitter statement as valid, particularly when it comes to DC. This is because when a writer is working on a project, they work with other writers or with others working on the project and go through many editors at DC. These editors are what keep DC as consistent as it is, considering how massive the verse is. This does not apply to Twitter, however. None of these statements go through any sort of editor or any process that you would see when something becomes a comic, so none of these statements should really be taken as canon. Furthermore, even if I was to take Twitter statements as valid, I could just as easily find similar Twitter statements that support an infinite dimensional DC. Now the bleed may in fact contain outerversal realms, there's nothing really stopping it from having them, as the orrery also has a trans-dimensional yacht within it. There aren't really many creatures to speak of living here. The only one that occurs to me is this strange unnamed creature in multiversity that may actually be one of the gentry and not native anyway. Beyond the bleed is a structure known as the time stream which is sometimes described as the fourth dimension, which again I'll get to later with Mixie. The time stream is what contains the timelines that regulate time throughout the bleed and the universes it contains, and is itself beyond all of space and time, making it something that many communities would call outerversal, meaning beyond all dimensionality. Eventually, the time stream begins to encompass another structure called hypertime, which, again, I will explain later where it would make more sense. At the edge of the bleed is the Speed Force Wall, known to the denizens of the Orrery as the Speed of Light. What this basically means is that to actually go beyond the Speed of Light in DC, you must move beyond infinite dimensions and beyond all of time, reaching nigh outerversal speeds. This is how DC characters travel millions or billions of times the speed of light without going back in time, which would what would happen in real life relativity. The speed of light in DC is simply much, much faster than anything we see in real life. This is how 
Wally West runs across the entire universe in an instant in one comic, and is still later described as running faster than he's ever run before in something like Final Crisis, whilst barely going over the speed of light. FDL speeds, in DC terms, are what we would call irrelevant speed, which is movement beyond the concept of distance, dimensions, and time. Something you need to travel to and through outerversal realms. Here, beyond the speed force wall, is the God Sphere, a realm of raw ideas and archetypal worlds, a world that exists without and beyond dimensions. Now, it should be noted that some of these structures, like the God Sphere, have been explicitly described as being unaffected by any of the crisis events. For instance, when Libra became so large that he transcended physical form and ascended to the sphere of the gods, he still remembered his encounters with the Justice League, despite the many retcons in between, and despite the Justice League not remembering him at all. So if you see some older scans for some of these things, that's why. They were never retconned, unlike other parts of the cosmology. The God Sphere itself is not only completely transcendent of the Bleed, but also contains a number of realms which themselves are described as being beyond the concepts of space and time. Olympus in Skyland, which is within the God Sphere, is described as being beyond and between time and space. The realm of a god of the Thirteen Heavens, called Fourth Heaven, is stated to reside in a place that transcends place, on a day that transcends a day. The Phantom Zone, also contained within the God Sphere, is described as being a boundless, dimensionless realm between being and nothingness. Hal Jordan also had to cross a distanceless and timeless barrier to reach the Phantom Zone. Heaven is beyond time and space and is equal in size to Hell, both of which are found in the God Sphere. In this scan, New Genesis and Apocalypse are described as existing beyond the bounds of space and time. And something I should cover is that in this same scan, Superman says the people there are equals to his own power because he is boom to bammed something I briefly covered in my Superman video, which you should go watch if that interests you. A boom tube essentially adjusts your size so that you aren't tiny, as even universes are smaller than microbes before you even reach the God Sphere. Another description of a realm within the God Sphere is that no words of human language can fully encompass it, and it is a place that is not a place, a time which is not a time. The dreaming and the nightmare contain a space beyond space, and a space beneath space. So some pretty robust outerversal scaling here when combined with what we know about the Bleed. The God Sphere has also been described as an archetypal world, with the new gods being described as powerful living ideas residing within a platonic realm. Heaven also contains living platonic shapes called cherubs. There are also numerous statements of there being infinite limbos, heavens, and hells within the God Sphere. This is because when each being dies in DC, they get their own afterlife. With infinite dead beings, you get infinite afterlives. Simple, really. Cherubs, new gods, demons, angels, the creatures of the dreaming, and the endless all live here among tons of other creatures. All of this, all of the God Sphere, is governed by a form of time known as hypertime which is described as being three temporal dimensions, essentially a time cube rather than a timeline, which is quite difficult to imagine how that would actually work, and I honestly cannot tell you how it would. It surpasses regular time and exists throughout the God Sphere. It has a physical manifestation known as the Brainfold Interior, which is the space between spaces and time between times. This is where the Fuganauts manage the realities and potential realities, making sure they don't interfere with each other. Above the God Sphere is a realm that I will call Comic Book Limbo, which is very different from the Limbo I previously mentioned. Comic Book Limbo is the place where forgotten characters go, and it completely transcends the Sphere of the Gods. The Sphere of the Gods is viewed as only non-existent fiction written in a book of infinite pages with the author being a dead monkey. And I say non-existent because stories do not and cannot exist within comic book limbo at all. So even this book, which contains all of reality below it, is non-existent to them. 
Nothing in comic book limbo ever has any meaning, including time and space themselves. The only things that live here are forgotten comic book characters. Through and beyond limbo is a realm known as the Monitor Sphere. It dwarfs limbo to the point where ships the size of cities in limbo are considered infinitesimal in the Monitor Sphere. The Monitor Sphere is itself a fundamental world of primal forms and stories beyond even limbo. Essentially, the Monitor Sphere is its own conceptual world where everything is more profound and meaningful. It is to the God Sphere what the God Sphere is to the normal universe. At its edge is Nil, a city where form and meaning surrender to the Overvoid. The Monitors live in the Monitor Sphere, but they actually are not native to the Monitor Sphere. After the Monitor Sphere comes the Aleph's. The entire universe can be seen at the same time from within an Aleph, and as their name Aleph would suggest, they are infinite in comparison to everything that comes before them. For those of you that are unaware, Aleph is simply one of the terms that is used to describe a infinite set. They are so complex, in fact, these Alephs, that Swamp Thing was able to use one to convince Metron, a new god who has been trying to reach the source for his entire life, that it was in fact the source. Beyond the Alephs lies the Source Wall, which is the limit to even thought. It stretches out to infinity and seals nearly all who touch it, to prevent others from reaching the source. It was made to contain the creator of the multiverse, Perpetua. Before the Source Wall existed, this is where the Antimatter Universe existed. Nothing lives here. Beyond the Source Wall lies the Source itself, which has been described as boundless in comparison to everything before it. It is the last edge of creation. If you ever see me refer to all of creation in DC, uh, this is what I'm talking about, as the source is the final edge of what was created by God. The source was once a single whole object, but it was split in two by Zeus and Odin, which created another force and is the anti-life, which is equal in scope to what remains of the source. The only thing I am aware of that is actually native to the source, other than creation of course, is the anti-life entity. There also seems to be another opposite to the source, known as the Shadowlands. It is where the primordial darkness fled to when the light of the source was created, which might be the same realm as the other place, which is essentially the body of the Great Darkness, and is the home to the other kind, who are themselves incarnations of the Great Darkness. The other place itself seems to be another realm that was called the Dark World and was featured prominently in the Silver Age. It is considered the source of all magic. Now, I'm going to have to cover the misconceptions about Perpetua and Mr. Mixie's strange existence. As of the recording of this video, the most recent Justice League run has just explained to us the existence of the Sixth Dimension, which is also apparently the highest plane of existence and likely exists beyond the source which probably seems awfully contradictory to a lot of you when you look at other statements that I've shown in this video. And I've seen people actually present this as a retcon for these previous statements. It is not a retcon, and entirely comes down to the meaning and use of the word dimension. Now, remember what I said about dimensions before. We start with a point, and onto a line, onto a square, and then a cube, and a tesseract, and etc. These are purely geometric mathematical structures. When Mixie describes the dimensions within DC, he is not talking about these. He is talking about planes of existence or realms, like how the word dimension is sometimes used to refer to a universe. A dimension, if you will. Firstly, Mixie says that the first dimension is just a point, which is already wrong. Then he says the second dimension is a line. Then he skips over two-dimensional objects like squares entirely, saying that matter, material stuff, is the third dimension. The time stream is apparently the fourth dimension, which as I already explained is consistently out of Ursul. And believe it or not, imagination is the fifth dimension. With the sixth dimension being beyond imagination and presumably being located beyond the source itself. 
These are planes of existence, not mathematical dimensions. This is how the fourth dimension and the time stream can extend all the way out to the source, and how the fifth dimension, imagination, can even reach and recreate the source in one Animal Man comic. Mixie straight up calls the sixth dimension a realm, and it's later directly described as being a plane of existence. So no, DC in its entirety is not sixth dimensional. It is beyond infinite dimensional, and has six planes of existence, which are named as numbered dimensions. Perpetua comes with her own set of problems regarding the creation of, well, creation, since that should really be down to the presence or God. Whether Perpetua is one of God's servants, or whether she is an aspect of God herself, is still unexplained as the comic is ongoing. On top of that, there is also Pralaya and her Sea of Brahma, which apparently birthed both God and all of creation, but otherwise goes unexplained. Another recent cosmological structure is the Dark Multiverse. It is the opposite side of the multiverse map, and so is arguably similar in size if not larger than everything else in creation. It is the counterpart to the positive matter and antimatter portions of the multiverse. Every fear and bad decision creates a new universe within the dark multiverse, and is the home of all stories that were never meant to be. From here on in, things start to get really wacky. Beyond all of this is a massive structure known as the Overvoid. The Overvoid is a representation of the white page itself, and is infinite and eternal. All of DC Comics is drawn on this void. From this perspective, all of creation just looks like a single infinitesimal speck amongst many. This is home to the monitors and strange living conceptual archetypes known as the Gentry. The Overvoid itself is also sentient and was stated by Superman to be some kind of abstract infinite intelligence. The gentry have been to other creations, with Empty Hand claiming to have already laid low Multiverse 2. When questioned about this in an interview, Grant Morrison said that there aren't just two multiverses, there are infinite, and they should all be contained within the Overvoid. Next is a place known as Final Heaven. It is a place outside the stories told on the Overvoid entirely. This is where the DC writers and the employees of Retcon Corporation exist. This is the level at which hyper-stories and hyper-realities are created. Here, both Retcon and the writers have access to not only all of the stories told on the Overvoid, but even fan fiction and realities that breach copyright. Retcon Corporation itself has access to a button that is able to wipe the entire Overvoid clean. It is hard to say where exactly Final Heaven is located, but the implication seems to be that it exists within a coffee stain within a world that views the Overvoid as an ordinary piece of paper. This world is likely the same realm as that of the Eonymous. They are, essentially, the group of gods that Retcon work to keep entertained. If Retcon fail to continue producing something that the Eonymous would find entertaining, they will destroy everything, as is their only purpose. Retcon use what they call the Omnipotence Box to broadcast to these gods in an attempt to keep them distracted. Another realm beyond the Overvoid is a place known as the Oversphere. Residents of the Oversphere similarly view the Overvoid as simply being 2D, calling it the Paperverse. The Overvoid exists within the crack, which was an accidental creation of Greg Freely as a result of him accidentally falling over whilst holding a pen after overdosing on drugs. Neither of these are anything, however, compared to the peak of the DC cosmology, the Leviathan of Stories. It is an infinite hierarchy of stories, with no top or bottom, and with each layer viewing the previous as mere fiction. Each individual layer of the Leviathan can have its own higher or lower dimensional realms. The reality that Greg Feely and the Eonymous reside in is only one layer within the Leviathan, with the story of DC contained on the Overvoid being amongst other infinite layers, each transcending the last to a similar degree. Which even starts to hurt my head to think about, and I've done quite a lot of research on this kind of stuff. 
And for now, that's it for the DC cosmology. And dear god, the scripting and editing for this video was an effort. A big thank you to Dream, Nairobi, and Sawaisi for their help with the research on this, I certainly needed it. And I do hope you all enjoyed the video. And once again, try to remember that this topic is extremely complex and is definitely open to interpretation. So I'm sure some of you are going to disagree with me on something somewhere, which is okay. As long as you came out understanding the cosmology a little better than you did before, that's a win in my book. And I'll see you guys next time.